1970s come alive Through this memory box we've known With country tunes and vintage scenes We'll take you back in time To a simpler place where love and melodies intertwine Since ancient times, people have been collecting antique buttons like these. These buttons are made from a wide range of materials, including metal, bone, wood, plastic, porcelain, and old ivory. They are not just ordinary objects, but pieces of history that can be found almost anywhere and held in your hand. In this article, we will explore numerous unique antique buttons and provide information on how to identify them. We will discuss when they were made, where they come from, and the materials used to create them. Collectors of these exquisite treasures lead active and purposeful lives. They are constantly on the lookout for lovely and unusual examples of buttons, searching through attics, antique shops, and auctions in the pursuit of undiscovered treasures. Their homes are like charming museumettes of Americana, filled with fascinating collectibles. However, in the world of button collecting, one can simply sit back and let the collection come to them. Buttons have a way of finding their way into a collector's house without much effort. But don't be mistaken, button collectors are just as knowledgeable and dedicated as collectors of glass and china. There are rare and valuable buttons out there waiting to be discovered. Most of us, though, are involuntary collectors. We inherit buttons from our mothers or save buttons from worn-out clothing because they are pretty and can be reused. However, many of us are unaware of the potential of our button collections. This is partly because we haven't actively sought out old and unique buttons, but mainly because we limit our perception of buttons. We see them only as fasteners and decorative elements for our family's wardrobe. But buttons have endless possibilities due to their infinite variety of designs and materials. With a little imagination, they can be used in countless ways beyond their traditional purpose. So, let's dive into the world of antique buttons and discover the beauty and history they hold. Identifying antique buttons from the 18th and 19th centuries can be a fascinating endeavor. One particular type of button that stands out is those adorned with cut steel knobs set in wheel-shaped ornaments. These exquisite collectible treasures hold a unique charm and can be a valuable addition to any collection. As an officer in the General Army from 1852 to 1870, it is important to have a keen eye for identifying antique buttons. These exquisite collectible treasures from the 18th and 19th centuries hold great historical significance. Sheila Mitchell, a collector from Kirkwood, has a passion for antique buttons. Her collection is a fascinating journey through various eras, showcasing centuries of different lifestyles and art forms. She has an extensive display of buttons, ranging in size, shape, and material. One button that catches her attention is a small black button with a raised profile of a man's head. This button, inscribed with the name Goodyear and the date 1851, is considered the first significant change in American button making. It is made of hard, vulcanized rubber, which was used for buttons before the Goodyear name became associated with automobile tires and blimps. Buttons were highly valued by Native Americans as trade items before the arrival of Europeans. Sheila believes that these trade buttons were used for decoration rather than practical purposes like fastening animal skin garments. During the early 1700s, France was known for its ornate buttons. These buttons were often adorned with precious and semi-precious stones and were sewn in rows on shirts, vests, waistcoats, and breeches. At the court of King Louis XIV, it was not uncommon for a well-dressed man to wear over 300 large buttons on his clothing. Many of these intricate and valuable French court buttons are now preserved in museum collections. 
Sheila's collection also includes buttons made of china and porcelain, some featuring delicately painted portraits or floral and pastoral scenes. She even has buttons carved from oyster and mussel shells, including one with a golden shell center depicting the profile of a Roman senator on a white background. It was the hand-painted china buttons that sparked Sheila's interest in collecting antique buttons. This led her on a never-ending quest to scour antique shops, flea markets, estate sales, garage sales, and second-hand stores in search of these unique treasures. Sheila's curiosity about buttons was piqued during a visit to the library, where she discovered the world of button collecting. She learned that the hand-painted porcelain and china buttons she had found were from the Victorian period. In Victorian society, it was expected for proper girls to learn china painting, resulting in an infinite variety of designs on china buttons. Collectible buttons come in all shapes and sizes, made from a wide range of natural and man-made materials. Some buttons were even made in Germany using redundant ammunition. Sheila emphasizes that button collecting is not an expensive hobby, as buttons can be found for just a few cents at flea markets or purchased from auctions where someone's old button box is up for sale. In shops, collectible buttons can be as affordable as 35 cents, while exceptional antique buttons can fetch prices up to $40. However, there are exceptions, such as the rare French museum pieces, which can be sold for hundreds of dollars by collectors or dealers. During the 1890s, it was a common American tradition for a girl to receive a string with a button on it from a friend. This string would then be added to by friends and family, similar to how charms are added to bracelets today. The goal was to collect a thousand buttons, as it was believed that this would ensure the appearance of the perfect husband. The British have a strong affinity for buttons. They hold an annual festival called the Pearlies in East London, where participants gather wearing garments adorned with white pearl buttons. During this festival, a pearly king and queen are chosen. However, Sheila, an expert in antique buttons, finds British buttons to be a bit old-fashioned. According to her, these buttons often feature family crests and heraldry, lacking the delicacy found in other collectible buttons. Of course, other collectors may strongly disagree, as personal preferences vary greatly in this field. For dedicated collectors, there are national and regional competitions to showcase their collections. The National Button Book, an official publication of a button society, provides a 30-page booklet with rules and categories for buttons. With over 25 major categories and around 400 specialized classes, there is a wide range of options for collectors to explore. Sheila Mitchell, a passionate collector, participated in the state competition in Sedalia last year. She entered carefully mounted collections in eight categories and received awards in five of them. She has also won national awards, proving her expertise in the field. It seems that Sheila has truly mastered the art of collecting buttons. If you're interested in starting your own button collection, you may find some treasures in your grandmother's sewing basket or receive unique buttons from friends. Flea markets and other sales are also great places to start your search for these exquisite collectibles. Today, I will be discussing antique buttons from the 18th and 19th centuries. These buttons are exquisite collectible treasures that hold great historical value. Let's take a closer look at some of these buttons and learn how to identify them. First, we have the Lily of the Valley button. This button is made of carved ivory and is truly a work of art. Next, we have the Dresden Bouquet button. It is made of porcelain and bears the Meissen mark of crossed swords, indicating its authenticity. Another beautiful button is the Flower Spray button, which is made of bone and is painted and gilded. Moving on, we have the Geranium button. This button is from the 18th century and features polychrome embroidery. It is a true testament to the craftsmanship of that era. The garden pink button is made of crystal and has intaglio painting on the back. It is set in a gold frame, adding to its elegance. 
The pansy button, on the other hand, is a reverse painting on glass and comes with a metal frame. It originates from France. Next, we have the iris button. This button is made of etched metal and has color rubbed in, giving it a damascening effect. It showcases exquisite oriental workmanship. The wild rose button is made of plastic horn and has a metal rim. It bears a British registry mark on the back, dating it to August 14, 1849. Lastly, we have the chrysanthemum button. This button is made of pearl and is engraved, gilded, and jeweled. It is truly a stunning piece. Moving on to more buttons, we have the forget-me-not button. This button is made of chased aluminum and was manufactured by the Scovel Manufacturing Company of Connecticut around 1890. The poppy button is made of hallmarked silver and was made in Birmingham, England, between 1903-4. It bears the maker's mark, JG. Finally, we have the rose, thistle, and shamrock button, which represents the national flowers of England, Scotland, and Ireland. It is gilt and adds a touch of patriotism to any collection. Please note that some of the buttons mentioned have been reduced in size for display purposes, while others are shown in their actual size. In conclusion, antique buttons from the 18th and 19th centuries are truly exquisite collectible treasures. By learning how to identify these buttons, we can appreciate their historical significance and add them to our own collections. During the late 19th century, antique buttons were highly sought after. These exquisite collectible treasures come in various sizes and feature intricate designs such as fox and stork, wolf and crane, fox and crow, the little fisherman, hop o' my thumb, red riding hood and wolf, pied piper, William Tell and son, and Robinson Crusoe. Today, I will be discussing antique buttons from the 18th and 19th centuries. These buttons are exquisite collectible treasures that hold a lot of historical value. Let's take a closer look at some of these buttons and learn how to identify them. First, we have a cat button with polychrome enamel. Next, we have a cow button made of silver. Moving on, we have a stag button that is gold inlaid in steel. Then, we have a dog button with a carved bone set in a metal frame. Following that, we have an elephant button made of tinted metal. Lastly, we have a frog button that is set with rhinestones. Continuing with our collection, we have a horse button made of silvered metal. Next, we have a lamb button with a mosaic design in a gold frame. Then, we have a lion button made of stamped brass. Moving on, we have a monkey button with intricate carvings on ivory. Following that, we have a snake button made of tinted metal. Lastly, we have a squirrel button made of metal. These buttons were most likely made in the late 1800s, showcasing the craftsmanship of that era. One button in particular, number 3, is part of a set of 16 buttons that depict the cycle of a deer. This button was made around 1850. Antique buttons are not only beautiful but also hold a piece of history. By learning how to identify these buttons, we can appreciate their value and the stories they tell.